Section 2.2 is entitled Angles Formed by Parallel Lines. Our goal in this section is to prove properties of angles formed by parallel lines and a transversal, and use these properties to solve problems. Yay, proofs! For this next activity, you will need a piece of paper, a straight edge, and a compass. A compass is one of those things where you have a pencil at one end and then a pointy thing at the other, and you turn it to actually draw circles. This is an example of a compass. All right, let's investigate the map. Bryony likes to use parallel lines in her art. To ensure that she draws the parallel lines accurately, she uses a straight edge and a compass. How can she use a straight edge and a compass to ensure that the lines she draws really are parallel? Here's the steps she uses to solve this problem. First, draw a straight line and then place a point labeled P above the line anywhere. P will be a point in the parallel line. Feel free to pause the video so you can follow along. Next step, B, draw a line through point P intersecting the first line at Q. C, using a compass, construct an arc centered at Q and passes through both lines. Label the intersection points R and S. So we're going to take our compass and place it so that our pointy tip is on Q. Set our pencil to however wide you want it. And then spin our compass around so it intersects both lines. D. Draw another arc centered at P with the same radius as arc RX. Label the intersection point T. To make sure that our arc has the same radius, simply place our compass on it and match up the points Q and S again, and then transfer it up to P. And that way we know that these two circles have the same radius. E. Draw a third arc with center T and radius RS, so we're still having our exact same radius, that intersects the arc you drew in step D, and label the point of intersection W. So now we're going to take our pointy end and put it on T, because that's our center. And we're going to spin it until it intersects our first arc, at W. And F, our last and final step. Draw the line that passes through points P and W, and this, show that they're parallel. If you remember from the previous section, we can show that PW is parallel to QS by showing that the corresponding angles are equal. So to do that, we take our handy dandy protractor, place it so that our center point is point P, and let's measure angle WPT. Angle WPT is about 63 degrees. Next, let's measure the corresponding angle, the angle that's on the same side of our transversal and also on the same side of our parallel lines. So in this case, it's to the right of our transversal and above our parallel line. So angle RQS is to the right of our transversal and above our parallel line. Centering our protractor at point Q. Oh, we get angle RQS is also equal to approximately 63 or 64 degrees. Now, because we've shown that the corresponding angles are equal, we know that line PW is parallel to line QS. And we can write this using this handy dandy little symbol right here. All right. Let's use our observational skills to make some conjectures and try to prove them. So example one, reasoning about conjectures involving angles formed by transversals. Make a conjecture that involves the interior angles formed by parallel lines and a transversal. Prove your conjecture. Now if you rem remember, interior angles were the angles on the inside of our parallel lines. So angle two, three, four, and five 
are interior angles. By looking at these angles, which pairs do you think are equal in measure, maybe? It looks like angle 3 should be equal to angle 2. That It just looks like that. But let's see if we can prove it. Okay, let's use a handy-dandy statement justification table to try to prove this. So remember, we can't start off saying that angle 3 is equal to angle 2, because that would be circular reasoning. So let's use things we do know about this picture, see if we can get there. So what do we know about angle 3 to start off? Not much. What do we know about angle 2? We know that angle 1 is going to be equal to angle 2, because if you look, they're on the same side of our parallel lines and on the same side of our transversal, which means that they're corresponding. So my statement then is that angle 1 is equal to angle 2. My justification is that it's corresponding. They're corresponding angles. So just for some visual information, I have that angle 1 is equal to angle 2. They're both red. Well, that's interesting. Now we kind of know something about angle 3 as well. Angle 1 and angle 3 are vertically opposite angles, and that means that they're also equal. So my statement was that angle 1 is equal to angle 3, and my justification for it is that they're vertically opposite. So now I'm going to make angle 1 equal to angle 3, so I'm going to make them both red. Well, if you look, angle 1, angle 2, and angle 3 are all equal. They're all red. But what's that property called that we learned about in the first chapter? Where if A is equal to B, and A is equal to C, then B is equal to C. It's the transitive property. So my statement is that angle 2 is equal to angle 3. Why? because of the transitive property. Because angle 1 is equal to angle 2, and angle 1 is also equal to angle 3. Therefore, angle 2 must be equal to angle 3. By the way, these angles are called alternate interior angles. They're interior angles because they're inside of our parallel lines, and they're alternate, meaning they're on different sides of the transversal. The really hoity-toity mathematician definition is that alternate interior angles are two non-adjacent interior angles on opposite sides of a transversal. Once again, alternate interior angles are two non-adjacent, so they're not beside each other, interior angles, so they're inside of our parallel lines, on opposite sides of a transversal. Now I'm going to make another conjecture. I'm going to say that interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary. They add to 180 degrees. So they're interior, which means they're inside of our parallel lines, and they're on the same side of transversal. So I'm going to show that angle 3 plus angle 5 is going to be equal to 180 degrees. So I'm going to use my handy dandy statement justification table. So what do I know about this? Well, I know that angle 1 is equal to angle 2 because they're corresponding angles. I also know that the measures of angle 2 plus angle 5 are supplementary because they form a line. Now, because angle 1 is equal to angle 2, I can substitute angle 1 for angle 2 to get that angle 1 plus angle 5 is equal to 180 degrees. So I'm just going to call my justification for that substitution, because I'm substituting angle 1 for angle 2. Now what do you notice between angles 1 and 3? Well, they're vertically opposite, so they're equal. So once again, angle 1 was equal to angle 3 because they're vertically opposite angles. But we can then do another substitution and substitute in angle 3 for angle 1. 
and we get that angle 3 plus angle 5 is equal to 180 degrees. So let's think back. What was I trying to show? I was trying to show that angle 3 plus angle 5 is equal to 180 degrees. Check that out. We're done. We proved it. Let's look at yet another conjecture. So Naveen made the following conjecture. Alternate exterior angles are equal. Alternate exterior angles are angles outside our parallel lines that are on opposite sides of the transversal. Let's listen to the short video to figure out how Naveen proved this. Naveen's conjecture is that alternate exterior angles formed by parallel lines and a transversal are equal. To prove her conjecture, I began by drawing a diagram and numbering the angles. I needed to show that angle 1 equals angle 4. I knew that angle 1 equals angle 2 because they are vertically opposite angles. Since angle 4 and angle 2 are corresponding angles involving parallel lines, they are equal. Since angle 1 and angle 4 are both equal to angle 2, angle 1 and angle 4 are equal to each other. Naveen's conjecture has been proved. Alternate exterior angles formed by parallel lines and a transversal are equal. So now we're just going to apply everything that we've learned. So we're going to try to determine the measures of A, B, C, and D. So we have two pairs of parallel lines. This line is parallel to this line, and this line is parallel to this line. Let's make those different colors so they stand out a bit better. All right, so we have our orangey-red transversals, or parallel lines, and our green parallel lines. Let's make this a little easier for ourselves. Let's just look at angles A and B first. Well, I know that angle A is equal to 110 degrees because angle A is corresponding with angle with this angle that's 110 degrees. Then it's pretty easy to find angle B because if we look here, angle A and angle B are vertically opposite. So because angle A is equal to 110 degrees, angle B must also be equal to 110 degrees. Alright, so we found the measures of angle A and B. So let's try to see if we, what we can do about this other side. Let's take a look at just this part of things. So now we have two parallel lines and a transversal. And what do we know about the angles that are inside our parallel lines and on the same side of a transversal? They're supplementary. Because angle A and angle C are supplementary, we know that 180 degrees minus 110 degrees, which is angle A, gives us the measure of angle C. C, in this case, is 70 degrees. Why? Well, because A and C are supplementary angles. So now all we have left, left to find is the measure of angle D. But if you notice, angle C and angle D are both inside of our red parallel lines, but they're on opposite sides of our green transversal. And that makes them alternate interior angles. And what do we know about alternate interior angles? They're equal. So we have angle C is equal to angle D, which is equal to 70 degrees. Why? Because angle C and D are alternate interior angles. So let's review the key ideas we learned in this lesson. So when a transversal intersects two parallel lines, the corresponding angles are equal, the alternate interior angles are equal, the alternate exterior angles are equal, and the interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary. So examples of corresponding angles in this 
would be angle A is equal to angle E, angle B is equal to angle F, angle C is equal to angle G, angle D is equal to angle H. Alternate interior angles are angle C and angle F, as well as angle D and angle E, that's a pair. Alternate exterior angles are angle A and angle H, as well as angles B and G. The interior angles on the same side of the transversal, we have two pairs here, we have angles C and E, as well as angles D and F. We also need to know the converse. So if a transversal intersects two lines such that the corresponding angles are equal, or the alternate interior angles are equal, or the alternate exterior are, angles are equal, or the interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary, then we know that the lines are parallel.